Alright, so much better, NJ. Your shirt isn't pink. And yeah, I'm still in my usual sweaty, you know, Q&A shirt, so I would say. Welcome to another Q&A with Western Bridge Fist. Where we answer your questions that you asked us, which you can ask us in the comment section below or through other means in the description box. Because it would be a great deal for us if you do continue to ask questions. New people watching the video, hello. Please ask us questions in the comment section below. And also, can I say, when we did that fist bump, you kind of had my finger a little bit there, NJ. I think it's, it's you're just your hands are getting a bit too yeah, for my liking. The bow of the Xbox Pro asked us our first couple of questions. Biggest... Overrated superstars ever. Goldberg and Nash are a couple for me. What about you guys? Overrated. John Cena. John Cena. You can't I, wrestle. Five moves to do. I think he's, he's actually upped his moves a little bit. So you could say now one six, move. seven, six moves of doom now. Maybe seven. Doesn't really make things like But people like Kevin Nash had, you know, the, the five moves of doom himself. Goldberg... I guess was overrated in the sense that he was a bit of a flash in the pan and lasted a couple of years, if not more. He didn't really have... He was really hot in WCW, then was kind of hot in WWE for one year. So, did he really do that much? Other overrated superstars? Can't really think of any off the top of my head, if I'm honest. Hogan. Hogan, no. I don't think you can call him overrated because he was one of the biggest superstars in WWE history. The leg drop, yeah. <laughs> he had one of the most overrated finishers. <laughs> Maybe he had one. Of, you know that that leg drop was a terrible finisher, but people bought it back before they found out about kayfabe. Brother. <laughs> Did you think WWE made a mistake in dropping Mr. Kennedy? I think he could have been a top mid carder for a WWE at worst. Some runs at main eventing are best in a mainstay for quite a while. Your opinion? One word. Hornswoggle. One word. Injuries. The guy got a lot of injuries. So it's hard to put stock in someone who gets so many injuries. They had a big chance to save Mr. Kennedy with the adopted son thing. Yes. If Mr. Kennedy became, let's say, a son, they could have made that work. Mr. Kennedy could be a main event of the WWE. And he would have had the McMahon support him. Triple H now supporting him. It would have been so much better. So injuries, yes, but I think it was the horns were thing that killed it. It's a shame Orton didn't support him either. Stupid, stupid, fucking stupid. Anyway, uh, Mr. Kennedy, yeah, he could have been some kind of top mid carder for them at best. And then he's he's been really flourishing in TNA lately, though, isn't he? And uh, I can't even give a straight face when I say that. <laughs> he's the man that officially killed off the worst faction in wrestling history. That's how it'll always go down. Do you think when the Shield does break up, obviously seems like Reigns will get the big singles push. Do you think Ambrose and Ronnie should keep it going? Maybe call themselves like the real Shield? I think well, they. Should, I think as soon as it does happen, they should probably all go their separate ways. Maybe Ambrose and Rollins could have a tag team for a little while. I look at Ambrose and still think, even though Reigns is going to be getting pushed first, Ambrose is going to be second place. So maybe Ambrose and Reigns feud. Rollins goes off on his own. I think yeah, they should just break up individually. I mean, on on SmackDown, I believe Seth Rollins had a pretty damn good match with John Cena, and you don't just get a match with John Cena if you're going to be the third person in a faction. That's all I'm saying. Um, better chant, Austin's what or Brian's yes. Oh. What got annoying very fast, whereas yes is still kind of going and it's still kind of funny. And to be honest, the yes chant yes, every wrestler's what? taken advantage of it. What? But I think the wash chants, yeah, they get pretty ridiculous by the yes chants. Every wrestler's yes. what, what yes. chants yes. was Austin's. The yes chance is getting given to Big Show, Triple H, um, Del Rio. C, C, C. So how, how annoying was it when I kept saying what in your face? It was pretty fucking annoying, wasn't it? There you go. That's the proof. Deco5757 almost made you want to not answer the question, didn't it? Does anyone ever remember the last time Ambrose defended the US title? Yeah. It was that. No. Was it the... Pre-show? No. I'm just to say this. When it comes to Ambrose, there's reports now that the WWE have asked Ambrose and uh, Langston if they want to unify their thing. So I'm hoping by WrestleMania or at WrestleMania, we'll get him defending it against Langston. Okie dokie. Adam Kehela. Hope I pronounced that for the second Q&A in a row, right? If not, then, well, that's two Q&As in a row. I've lost your name. If Sami Zayn was to be brought up within the next year, how and when would you bring him up? Would you debut him as Sami Zayn or El Generico? Because you can see the mask as Generico. I believe you asked us a similar question in the last Q&A, but how and when would you bring him up? First, I want to get the El Generico thing. No matter what, I know WWE have to do it for personal reasons, their business thing, but he's El Generico, so I think if the WWE can bring him back as the name he's most famous for, brilliant. How I'd bring him in, 
Maybe he'd be the person to play Rey Mysterio because the Sin Cara thing can't happen. But either way, I think he could be the next masked saviour unless they keep him maskless. I mean, if Hunico doesn't work out, then maybe he could be a masked superstar. I don't know. But I think personally, I prefer just to see him as Sami Zayn as, you know, he has added some different elements to, you know, as a pro, as you know, in terms of promo and character than what he had in the ROH when he was really just a wrestler that kind of did a silly head shake every now and then. So, you know, I would bring him up. I mean, I, I said put him in the Rumble, have him do a decently well, you know, and maybe just go from there. Do a John Morrison or Kofi Kingston, him give the spots, because obviously they'll generic code. That's why people like him so much in ROH, because of the stuff he brought. How many times do you reckon we're going to mention ROH in like the next 10 q and It's like twice? Yeah. Because he was a shit. Howard Starr, how would you build a match between John Cena and Hulk Hogan in the golden era? Well, this would be fucking easy. John Cena has never faced Hulk Hogan before. Hogan wants to come back and still prove that he can be a top guy in the WWE, and he's going to try and beat WWE's number one guy to prove that, although he will eventually lose in the WrestleMania main event for the ages WrestleMania 30, even though the match will probably suck. Basically, I was going to say, this is going to be another Rock versus Cena. Hogan might win. Well done, Hogan. But next year, you're losing to Cena. No, I don't think they would have Hogan beat Cena at all. I think just it would be a one-in-a-shot deal, and Cena would just beat Hogan. Easy. Hogan probably couldn't even wrestle anyway, so maybe have and they've been they've been thinking of their bad knee yeah. and bad ego as well. But they may be are planning on putting them in some sort of tag match, so Hogan doesn't have to do all that much work. I don't know. They're just something I've heard on the dirt sheets. What do you think to that? A tag match for a WrestleMania possible main event? No, no, not necessarily main event. It's a WrestleMania match. WrestleMania main event might be Orton versus fucking Batista for all we know. Well, if John Cena's possibly going to be chasing the. Championship because you know John Cena's going to get a big match at Mania. It's how he is. So, what? Tag match? No. John Cena and. Ah, here's a good one. John Cena and Hulk Hogan versus the Wyatt family. How about that one? Uh, these things, yeah, talk about this. I know it's not part of the QA, but there's been these dirt, you know, dirt sheets. The WWE are trying to break down the dirt sheet. So, I think all this John Cena Wyatt thing, it just bull. It would be funny if the WWE actually managed to work the dirt sheets. RFB089, Mr. Parkin, do you think Paul Scott was one of the most underrated players of all time? The reason I'm asking him is because there are other players who are viewed as great players like Beckham, but I think that helped his career in the fact that he was always promoting himself in the media. Well, Paul Scholes was always a guy that kept himself to himself, and I don't think for a minute that he is underrated. A lot of people say that he is one of the best midfielders to you know ever play for Man United, so I don't think he's underrated. I just think he underplays himself because he doesn't want to be in the spotlight all the time. That's Paul Scholes' view. It's like when Paul Scholes retired at the same time as, as Alex Ferguson, even though Ferguson tried to give Paul Scholes a spotlight, he just refused it. I know you're hating all this football talk, NJ, so we'll just go on to the next question. Do you think that it's fair, unfair that Alberto Dorio had longer bodyweight championship runs than the likes of The Undertaker and Mark Henry when ADR had, had forgettable and boring world title runs that no one can remember? It's not exactly unfair. It's just WWE trying to ram this guy down our throat and see if this next FCW guy will actually work when, you know, after three years he really hasn't. Unforgettable title runs for Alberto Dorio. Well, apart from his mania with the Christian Edge thing, that is his most memorable, I'm guessing. I've always cash in, but either way, I think the fact that Alberto de Rio was failing to work, but still giving the championship shots, was the main cause of that. And he was in the title run for pitcher for like a year plus. It's like, come on! It's like even guys like The Rock and Austin weren't in the title picture for a year plus. You know, give us a break. Is the Shield the best faction slash team since Evolution? Oh, no. what do you mean in terms of longevity, long-term success, or as a group, or what the impact was made? There are so many things you can really judge this on. I'm guessing, yeah, this would have been asked uh, be, uh, during the Wyatts, because the mm. Wyatts, they're not quite a faction, but it's still three and three. Yeah. So to be honest, the Shield when they first came in were dominant, but then they slipped up. The Wyatt family are still new, but they're still staying at an okay pace, but... I'd say at the moment when the Shield had the biggest impact, I'd say not as good as Evolution, but no. they're definitely up there. I don't think Shield will ever be as good as Evolution because in Evolution you have the top guy, Triple H, Ric Flair, the manager, and the two young guys in Batista and Orton. And in the Shield, you know, Roman Reigns is potentially going to be getting a massive push, but what about Ambrose and Rollins? Are they really going to be main eventers down the line for WWE? 
I doubt it. So you ne I don't think you're ever going to get a better faction than Evolution in terms of you know what they did and how they made stars for the company. Roy Green, what do you think of instead of turning Roman Reigns babyface, they book him as a loose cannon sort of monster tweener? They tried it with Ryback and that failed, but I think the fact that they could try it better with Roman Reigns. I think the fact that he is like a character that could be heel or face. Heel because he's got this shield kind of build up mm. and he's got the body to be a heel like the Batista. But the face, obviously when he breaks out the shield and turns on uh, Ambrose and Rollins, I think he could be both. Yeah, I don't see why not. With the news that WWE may apparently be getting rid of baby faces and heels, who knows? Maybe they will make him a tweener. Who really knows? Deco, never believe what you read on the dirt sheets, though, people, because if you read the dirt sheets, AJ Styles will have gone from TNA and Jeff Hardy has left the company and all oh, the wrestling business is going to shit, which it probably is. Deco5757, if WWE pressed the restart button and wiped the sleep claim, who would you give each championship to and what would your initial major feuds title and non-title be? So the restart button, so we've got, still got the talent. I'm guessing the, the talent now. So we say the, the, unif the WWE Wonderboy Championship, who, we'd have to give this to the top, who, a guy we would deem the top guy. Okay. If, we're, if, if you're not resetting setting the wrestlers to like when Barrett was good, uh, we would say... Who would be like a good top guy for our company that, you know, that would sort of represent us? I wouldn't want it to be like an established guy. I'd want it to be someone new. I'm leaning the fact that the WWE couldn't keep him there, Daniel Bryan almost. Do it I, properly with him. I don't know about Daniel Bryan. I'd probably give Daniel Bryan my mid-card belt, possibly. Main event. I'm just thinking of someone different that can represent the company. Uh, I'd say I'd CM Punk. I, I'm just putting it out there. Um, what, um, what about tag team championships? I'd say Wyatt Family. I'd give him to the Wyatt Family. For a start... And then obviously maybe lose it to the white family. The ooh, souls, not finally, bad, finally, not a bad shout. And I, I'd, have, I'd have the mid, mid card titles unified, and maybe put Daniel Bryan in the unified. So I, I kind of like Biggie Langston as the IC though. I think for the unified, I'd give it to one of two people. Either if they once he's became champion, use it properly, Ambrose. That'd be a kickstart for Ambrose. Or I'd give it to Damon Sandow. As for initial major feuds... Oh, we didn't say Divas, which I'll get to the time. Oh, Divas, who gives a shit about the Divas. Um, but um, initial major feuds. If we're going to have someone like CM Punk as our top guy, I'd love to see him face Triple H. He'd be like a sort of... He'd be like the Vincent Mann type character. He'd be like an Austin, like the modern day version of Austin and McMahon. Kind of do it like that. As for the mid-card belt, Daniel Bryan facing someone like a Roman Reigns. Uh, that, that wouldn't be a bad idea, in my opinion. Or maybe. Tag, we've already said it. Yeah, Wyatt versus Wyatt. Yeah, although the Wyatt family versus someone like would versus like She or something. Maybe one of those two Tony face. That would be pretty good. So there, are, there are loads of possibilities there. Um, but too much possibilities really just to really go in detail. The two ninety nine. Would you care about a Ryback versus Goldberg match at this point? Not really, because Ryback. I mean, what the fuck are they doing with Ryback right now? Even though he's starting to pick up wins as of last he's week. Tag team Curtis fucking Axel. Mr. And Boring! I think, to be honest, even if he does start to get wins, he'll either get fed to Goldberg or fed to Batista or whatever road they're going to go down. The Ryback train has now passed the station and no one's getting on it anymore. Let's just keep it at that. The Neon Brick. Do you think Batista will return? <laughs> no, no. Not, not, not returning. Not he's not, not, not going to return on the 20th of January. I know that for sure. No. But no and this question would have been asked before it was announced. No, so he's not returning. No. I, no. I wouldn't have said he was. But now, because when he kind of when he when he signed, I was kind of like, "Whoa, I didn't expect that." It's not Batista; it's Mason Ryan. <laughs> remember, people, remember, remember. <laughs> and for a streak, <laughs> ninety-five out of Raw, SmackDown, main event, and superstars. Which show should WWE scrap? Main event and superstars. You know, I think to be honest, the fact that Raw gets all the concentrations. If they scrap SmackDown, I'd be like, "Yeah." True, very true. <laughs> RFV089. Do you think Bo Dallas could be brought up to the main roster as he previously was, but was brought back down to NXT? A mistake. I, I mean, the thing is, Bo Dallas is very young. So if you, you could keep him in NXT for another couple of years, develop his character, and then bring him up to the roster. He is still about 22, 23 of my, you know, from what I know, which is still plenty of time to bring him up. So I, I wouldn't say you bring him up just yet. But let him develop in NXT a little bit and then bring him up and, you know, give him a proper push, give him a proper character. 
if he was to come into the main roster, I think he should have a match with Eva Marie. They're both young and they could both do nothing in the WWE. Eva Marie want. being a manager. It's better than her being in the ring, I'll just say that. Does Bray Wyatt have the potential to be a character similar to The Undertaker in terms of having a presence and unique character? In terms of having a present in terms of having a pres presence and unique character, you'll never ever beat The Undertaker. Because The Undertaker was a one-of-a-kind gimmick. It created buried alive matches. Pen in the cell matches, casket matches, you know, ma all these kind, all these different things were developed around the Undertaker gimmick, the streak. You're never ever going to get anything like that again. But I think if there's one character that could potentially get somewhere near there down the line, it would be Bray Wyatt. I think Bray Wyatt. They kind of messed up with Daniel Bryan. He could be someone. He kidnaps people. They they blown it mm. now with Kane and Daniel Bryan who could help them change their character, help them go from a face to a heel, or adapt their character. He could torment them to bring out a new side to that individual wrestler. But that's gone now. So I think he's still got the chance to do something in the WWE different to other wrestlers. We'll have to see. Due to WWE's large tag team division, what would you rather see? A TLC tag team match at WrestleMania 30 for the tag titles, or a Money in the Bank ladder match for the tag team so for the tag team title match. I'd much rather see TLC. That would be fucking awesome. I'm sorry, by WrestleMania, there's not gonna be this many tag teams. You know how quickly they break up tag teams. But if anything, I think we should get a multiple tag team big match. Because having two and two, okay, but add interest. Add interest, kinda of like banking. Add interest. Because we're bankers and we're greedy. Yeah. If we, if, if you were WWE and you had to pick six guys to be booked in the upper mid card and main event for the next five years, would Antonio Cesaro and Biggie Langston be in that group? I yes, think... Biggie Langston and Biggie Langston definitely would be because he's got he's a black big you know he's a big fucking black guy who weighs three hundred pounds. Is so it, I'd definitely it, have him in there. Is it because he's black? It's definitely because he's black. Like your shirt, he's unique. The guy's unique. And Cesaro maybe would be on the cusp. But I don't think he would be in the top six, even though I think he would have potential in the mid card. I'm going to put him in the top six for two reasons. Number one, I don't think he's ready to go up just because he swings people. Don't get excited, people. It's just a swing. <laughs> the other thing is because with that finish he used to do, the uppercut to the mid carders, very impressive. It's just a swing. <laughs> yes, because it is. It's <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone in there is raving about this swing, and then MJ just comes along saying, It's just a swing, don't get so excited about it. Yeah, why do you do that? No, no, no. Uh, seriousness though, yeah, Biggie Langston would be up there. <laughs> you know, that was funny, MJ. I'd say Roman Reigns would be a guy I would put in that upper six. Cody yeah, Rhodes would be a guy I'd put in that Damian upper Sandals. six. Well, I think Damien Sandow, Brand. Daniel Bryan. Dan Daniel uh, Reigns break out that. Quite quickly, I yeah. think. But Bray Daniel Wyatt, Bryan, move back down. Bray Wyatt would be in that six. Bray Wyatt, even though people want to see him up there, but I think we've got our six. Yeah, I mean, there are quite a lot of people that if WWE did push, they could, you know, put in an upper echelon of six people. Uh, if you have any other thoughts, please tell us down below. American Alucard. This will be the last set of questions we answer here. Does that? It's just a swing. But Mr. Parkin, is it me or does the NXT crowd feel like an India ROH crowd? Yes. I think you have a lot of people that go to NXT that go there probably on every time they do the tapings and they feel quite passionate like myself about NXT. And it's very small and you can hear, you can, you know, instead of being in a massive arena where it's going to be hard to hear a select amount of people, you can hear someone who just wants to shout out, you suck. Whereas if that was in like Raw, you'd never fucking hear it. Well, even though the crowd is usually dead anyway. How would you repackage the Bellas separately? Uh, it would be difficult because they're pretty much the twins. This is it. Simple. The WWE should use real live. Daniel Bryan sleeps with the other one. Cena sleeps with yes. the other one. I like it. I also like the idea of good twin, bad twin. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, I do like the idea of them actually bringing... Your idea of actually bringing in the, the whole relationship with Daniel Bryan and, you know, the, his Bella, as I don't know which one's going out with which. And John Cena, I think, is going out with Nikki Bella. I like the idea of that, actually. That's not a bad way to separate, separate them out, you know, have it be them or their men. You know, mm. Of course, if you were making better, you'd go for John Cena because he's, you know, money. In a shoot interview, Jim Cornette said Kevin Cena is a great personality and talker, but isn't believable as a champion because he wouldn't lose weight and won't make it to the WWE. Your thoughts? I, I actually watched this interview where Jim Cornette was talking about Kevin Steen. 
I think the problem with Kevin Steen was Jim Cornette just could never trust him, you know, in a corporate situation, you know, because he just wasn't that kind of guy. He was a really entertaining guy. He was probably the one person that kept us watching ROH for six months after we, you know, probably started watching it. But, you know, the guy didn't look, the guy looked like a slob. You know, he looked like a random guy you'd find drunk out on the street. There's no doubt about that. And he wouldn't make it to WWE with that look. He just wouldn't. In ROH, with a big guy like Kevin Steen, you know not to mess with him because of his size and what he's done in previous matches. But I think to be taken seriously, he's not got the body of no. like a Batista, Brock Lesnar. He's just got him. He's just got, well, a describe. belly, which, you know, you usually associate with people eating a lot of turkey. On Thanksgiving and Christmas and every day of the week. But anyway, we're not here to make fun of Kevin Steen because he is a very good talent. We're not making fun of him here. We're just saying. But anyway, that's been another Q&A from us, the British List. Good job. Wow, that's kind of hurt for us some time now. I think you've broken my finger doing that. And can you just outro this one, please? And um, people, please don't follow the buzzards. Follow the British Fist by looking at the links in the, in the description box below. And for Mr. Parkin and me, NJ, please keep believing in us. And until next time, YouTubers, thank you very much for watching. And goodbye.